Today I will be talking about how I modded this mini ITX case to fit a much larger micro ATX board. I will also be talking a bit about how I like to approach case modding and a few personal tips I have for anyone who wants to mod a PC case. Firstly, I'm using the Bitfenix Prodigy case. This is a very roomy mini ITX case designed to support liquid cooling while still maintaining plenty of room for things like hard drives and disk drives. So why am I modding this case? Well, I don't need six full-sized hard drives or even a DVD drive for that matter. What I do need, however, is support for a larger motherboard. Micro ATX boards tend to house more features than their mini ITX models. And they also tend to run a little bit cheaper, which is why I'm hoping to use one in my build. So you might wonder, why not just buy a bigger case that supports the motherboard size, like for example, the micro ATX version of this same case made by Bitfenix? Well, that sort of common sense and reason just isn't what this channel is about, but also there are plenty of other really cool and quite large mini ITX cases that can support a micro ATX if you put the time and effort to mod it. So let's get to it. This is how I put a micro ATX board in a mini ITX case and my tips on case modding. So my first tip is pick your case. And I don't mean just picking a case you like. I mean picking a case that will actually fit. A micro ATX board can be up to 244 millimeters or 9.6 inches wide. So you need a case that has at least a height or width of that much. They can also be up to the same depth, but check the specifications of your specific motherboard as many manufacturers actually make boards of a slightly smaller size. So you might be able to get away with a little bit less room. Don't forget you'll also need room for a power supply, graphics card and CPU cooler, which are the other bulky parts of a computer. Once you have everything measured out, the second tip I have is to pick a sacrificial case. Find yourself an old PC case either lying around in the scrap or second hand on the internet. This doesn't have to be anything fancy. I picked this one up for around $10 second hand and it even still had the original plastic panel protector on it. This will make mounting the motherboard so much easier as you now have a frame that you can use with pre-cut holes and screw mounts. What we'll now be doing is taking out the internals and the back panel of the Bitfenix case and mounting the back panel and side panel of the sacrificial one inside. To do this, you'll need a power drill. The first step is to take out the back and side panel of the sacrificial case. The easiest way to take out these small rivets is to pick a drill bit slightly larger than the holes at the end of the rivet and just drill it out. There are quite a few rivets that hold the panels in place, so expect a lot of drilling. For the next step, you'll need a hacksaw or a jigsaw, preferably one with a blade designed for aluminium, and a rivet gun. We'll reshape our new back panel so it is the same size as the original. Cut off any excess length that won't fit into the new case using a hacksaw. I used a full-sized ATX sacrificial case, so I had to cut quite a fair bit. This meant measuring the size of the back panel that I had taken off and matching it with the new panel. Since the back panel comes from a much thinner case, I had to take a few spare offcuts to make the panel the right size. I riveted this to the main board. I left a few extra centimeters to make the edges, which are curved back. I made these by making a few cuts and then bending the edge backwards. The easiest way to do this is to clamp one end down and then bend it backwards using a wooden board before getting a sharper corner with a hammer. Once this is done, we can take out the original back panel and fit our own into the Bitfenix case. I also inserted the new case's motherboard mount since this is designed for micro ATX boards. I did a quick coat of paint just so the back panel of the case matches with the theme of the rest of the case. After drilling a few mounting holes in the back panel, the whole thing can now be riveted together. I would recommend just lining the rivets up with the original case's rivet points, so you only need to drill one set of new holes. So this completes my new case, complete with my own handmade back panel. 
Inside, it's fully capable of holding a micro ATX board and plenty of room for other accessories as well. Now notice that I don't have enough room to mount the power supply at the back, and this is where my third tip comes in. Tip number three, don't be afraid to experiment a bit with non-conventional arrangements. Not everything will fit the same way it does in a bigger case, so be prepared to have to move things around. I mounted the power supply at the front of the case and used a longer power cable to route this through the case. I cheated a little when I did this and I actually removed two of the screws securing the power supply fan and used those screw holes to mount it to the front of the fan mount of the case. You will also notice that I've actually mounted the motherboard upside down. I did this for airflow reasons, by taking air in from above, blowing it over the graphics card and motherboard and then venting it downwards, I take in less dust from the environment, especially since this case will spend the majority of its time on the ground in a carpeted room. I'm mounting my Pentium G3258 system, the overclockable Pentium processor released a few years ago. Since editing this video, I've actually swapped out that processor for a Xeon processor of the same socket, equivalent to an i7 from the same generation. I paired this with an AMD GPU, which unfortunately completely ruins my black and red theme that I had going. And this is the finished product, a micro ATX motherboard inside a mini ITX case. You can see it's actually still quite roomy in this case, though to be fair, it is a very big mini ITX case and Bitfenix did eventually release a micro ATX version of it. So that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe it gave you a few ideas to try in a case mod of your own.